welcome back to my channel my name is Dele I am a Nigerian youtuber based in England welcome to my channel if this is your first time seeing this beautiful gorgeous face please don't forget to like share subscribe all of those good 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 stuff so let's go straight into today's uh, video you're not aware I travel to Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. Côte d'Ivoire and Ivory Coast are the same country. Côte d'Ivoire is the French name for the country and Ivory Coast is the English name for the country. So if you, refer, if you, if you hear me referring to Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast, I'm talking about the same country. But for the purpose of this video, I'm, let's stick to Côte d'Ivoire. So my friend stays in Côte d'Ivoire. She stays in, in Abidjan to be precise. Abidjan is one of the big cities in Côte d'Ivoire. She's lived there for over five years. I think I will say you're watching this video forgive me but yeah she lived there lived there for for many years and she's always invited us to come and pay her visit but last year this year we were able to visit our friend in Cote d'Ivoire and first of all Elsa was an amazing host and a host with the most but I said to myself I need to do a sit down video talk about the cultural shock that I experienced while I was over there in Cote d'Ivoire we visited three cities Abidjan, Asin, Asini, and Yamosukuro. And guys, I've got a playlist on my channel. We had an amazing, amazing time over there in Cote d'Ivoire. So please watch the videos, like, share, don't be stingy. Share the playlist with people that are interested in visiting Africa. And that's the reason I'm filming this video to change the narrative. Yes, we need to travel within Africa. Yes, it's good to travel to Asia, travel within Europe, travel within America. But guys, we also have to, that's, that's why people like us, content creators, have to showcase con the continent of Africa. And I'm so glad I, was, I am part of those now changing the narratives about Africa. So guys, and I'm going to do this down video to talk to you guys about the cultural shock that I experienced. And to be honest, I was so impressed. Cote d'Ivoire, the government of the government of Cote d'Ivoire. The, pre the previous government, the people of Cote d'Ivoire. Because sometimes we, all, we blame the African government, with, like for example, Nigerian government. But sometimes even we, the people, we need to do better. And I'll talk about all of this in this the video. First cultural second. shock for me was when I arrived at the airport. So as a British citizen, I continue to apply for a visa online which myself and my friend Hannah, she was my travel buddy. I'll, I'll be inserting some pictures there and they're mainly myself and Hannah because we were the, we went to visit our friend Elsa that lives there. So if you see a lady, I, I keep saying Hannah, I'm referring to my travel buddy. We travel together. Anna, thank you for being an amazing travel buddy. So we had an amazing time. So the application was straightforward. Within 10, 15 minutes, I was done with the application. I submitted, I paid about $75 for it. Within like few hours, I got a notification. I got an email saying I've been approved. I need to then, obviously, when you then get to Cote d'Ivoire at the airport, have an interview with a uh, immigration officer who would then stamp your passport with the visa, and then obviously you gain entry into the country. So the first cultural shock for me was when I arrived arrived at the airport. I noticed that there was a system in place enough for you to obviously to obtain the visa. Like us, those are know if you travel to Nigeria, you always get this anxiety of what you what you are going to experience at the airport because of this, because of the immigration officers because they don't have a system in place. The last time I traveled to Lagos, Nigeria was over five years ago. It might be different now, but with the videos I watch on TikTok and Instagram, people still have the same anxiety and issues with the Nigerian immigration officers. So I don't think anything. I don't think anything has changed. But if you think Otherwise, please leave a comment down below and tell me the systems that we have in place, especially in Lagos, Nigeria. So when I arrived at the airport, there was a, um, in Cote d'Ivoire, we arrived um, in Abidjan. Abidjan is the, I think it's the capital of Cote d'Ivoire, I'm not sure. If it's not, and I'll put the name, the capital on the screen for you guys. So we arrived in Abidjan. So when we got to the visa area, there was like a system in place, like where you can get, like a machine where you can get a ticket. There's a number on the ticket. Obviously, then when is your turn, you'll be called in to have a one-to-one -one with the immigration officer and obviously obtain your visa. I don't think we have that system in place in Nigeria. I was, I didn't expect that when I got there. In terms of where to go to, what to pick up, a pick up a ticket. And after you pick up your ticket, you take a seat. But it was a very busy airport that day. There were a lot of flights also arriving at the same time that we arrived. It wasn't rowdy. There was a, I, I could see professionalism in place. 
get number you call your number and you go to the immigration officer within two to three minutes they stamped our passports with a visa they were not asking us for money we we're professionals throughout our time with them at the visa section this is africa west africa i was so impressed then after that you have to go then go back on the queue to then obviously get your visa stamped to obviously, obviously for you to get entry into the country the queue was quite a busy queue we waited our turn i didn't see anyone pulling one auntie one maybe it happened maybe i didn't witness maybe i didn't see it but i didn't see, like in nigerian airport if you know someone you don't even have to queue up the people already waiting for you telling you come like because they didn't know one auntie one uncle one senator one governor already spoken to one person to tell them that you're going to arrive so you don't need to stay on the queue you're still, just going to go straight ahead stamp your passport and you're, you're good to go but at this airport i did not witness that that it was our turn we got to the immigration officer they looked professional dressed professional spoke professionally to us and calmly with respect and they said why are you here how long are you here for few within few minutes again they stamped our passport so we can get entry into Cote d'Ivoire. there was no asu there was no one bothering us because nigeria you did something they did look at you like auntie drop something uncle drop something i, I don't have dollar you don't have euro whatever you have naira we will collect it they stamped our passport and we're good to go and that was my first cultural shock i was like wow is this africa is this west africa like i was so impressed so professional no attitude go on about nigerians Ugh. nigerians that work in the customer facing roles their attitude like they are anyway that was my first cultural shock then the second cultural shock i experienced we were there for like six days we stayed in different cities different settings because when i said this to my family and friends, they said oh because of the area where you stayed that's why you didn't experience this but people that stay in places like places like lekki Lekki is an affluent place to live in Nigeria. Ikoyi, Victoria Land, the mainland, Ikeja, Surulere. Well, this is based on my experience of living, living in Nigeria so many years ago. But okay, Lekki, who doesn't know Lekki? If you have a house in Lekki, it's like you have made it in life. But they still don't have 24-7 electricity. We were there for six days and hear yeah, the sound of a generator. One second, did we experience any power cuts at the hotel and at the my friend's house? My friend's house when we went to Brit, like we went to different places. Even when we went to Yamosuk, like there was like I did not hear the sound of a generator. And I can if a if a country like Cote d'Ivoire can have electricity twenty four seven, what is preventing us in Nigeria to in Lagos? the biggest one of the biggest city in the in africa or sure show but it's a big city millions of people live in lagos because your friends and family live in certain countries it doesn't mean that you know everything that's going on in that country because you don't get to ask them oh do you have electricity i didn't even ask i didn't even bother ask. i just assumed them when we get there i'm sure my friend will have a generator i was i could not believe that my friend does not live doesn't have a generator in 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 her apartment even the shops that we visited, like I could not hear sound of a generator, and I was like, "Wow, is this Africa, West Africa? Maybe an hour flight to Lagos." Like I'm thinking, "Wow, if they can do it, then obviously we can do it." But our government have decided they don't want to provide electricity electricity for us twenty four seven. Comment section. Even though they that they don't use generator, they have twenty four seven twenty four seven electricity. Also, put in the in the comment section so that you can educate people like us that obviously we haven't visited Lagos in a while or Nigeria in a long while. So, but based on what I hear people to talk about the complaints, I still have friends and family that still live in Lagos in Nigeria, and the same complaint uh, about electricity, they still complain about not having electricity twenty four seven. I don't know. Cote d'Ivoire is a French. I don't think I mentioned at the beginning of this video, but I did mention it in my vlogs in my travel vlogs that is a french speaking country and that's why they have a french name Cote d'Ivoire and an english name ivory coast what cultural shock that i experienced was my experience at the local markets we visited three local markets and those that also know that i've lived in lagos or that i still live in lagos to know this or in nigeria I keep saying Lagos because I lived in Lagos. I can only talk based on my own experience. 
because when before i moved to the uk and based on my experience going to the market is another um, battle if you live in lagos you have to make sure that you are dressed appropriately you have to make sure that you go with someone that you trust like me, i used to have a lot of anxiety going to the market even with my mom with someone older than me, someone I trust, even with my siblings, with my friends. Today I was planning a market vlog. I'm going to wear something more covered, cover, covering my arms, my legs. Because of my experience of living in Lagos, I wore a jumpsuit. Obviously, it was sleeveless. It was an altar neck jumpsuit. But I had no choice. Well, that, was a, that was the only outfit, outfit I thought was appropriate to wear to the market. But I was still a bit nervous because I'm thinking, oh, they're going to drag me, they're going to pull me, they're going to touch on me, you know? We went to three different markets and no one, no one laid their hands on us. No one pulled me. So <laughs> I was so impressed. Like, is this a market? Go to a particular store, you don't like what you see there. They, they don't even cuss you or give you attitude for not buying any stuff. They say, okay, bye. See you later. And they move on to the next customer. They don't make you feel like you must buy something from their store. Every store that you walk into that you must buy something from because maybe what you want is not in that particular store. And you walk you walk out from the store. That's it. They even Nigeria in Lagos. <laughs> the way they will cuss you out, give you attitude, cuss your 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 ancestors self. The ancestors that you don't even know, they will cuss your ancestors just because you do not buy something from their store or you do not go into their store. And even the men, they will start pulling on you, touching on your on your arms, on your neck, like looking at you like none of that. None of that. They were so calm. Like they seemed frustrated. They didn't seem like it is the end of the world for you or for them if you don't buy anything from their store. The way I was so impressed, that way, like I was in... In, in a country that had a system, in a, in a country that, I feel like I was in a European country. Like, I couldn't believe this was Africa, West Africa to be precise. Like, Nigerians, if you're watching this video, we need to do so better. Another cultural shock that I experienced was the attitude and the professionalism of the domestic staffs that we came in contact with. My friend, I said my friend lives over there. She had domestic staff that helps around the house, cleaning, cooking. She has a driver. It's quite a number of days with, especially with the driver, driver because we're going to different city, like I said. And although this driver is Nigerian, but I'm not. I'm sure that if he was not, if he was in Nigeria, the attitude or the professionalism will be different. Because throughout our time with this driver. Never for once did he hassle us for money or looking at, oh, auntie, I'm going to give me money. Auntie, oh, ah, buy this for me. Oh. Even when we're talking in the car, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't get involved in our conversation. Because sometimes myself and Anna were Yoruba. It's also Yoruba. And it doesn't, even though sometimes we're speaking Yoruba, we're speaking English. He understands English. He can speak English. He also understands the local language, French. Yes, he can also speak French. But my point is, Whatever language you were speaking, either we were speaking Yoruba or speaking English, it did not even turn around to say, Hanty, hey, I know what you... Nothing like that. He focused on why the job that he's been assigned to do, which is to drive us to our destination. It, I know a lot of domestic staff in Nigeria. They are so nosy, so disrespectful, full of attitude. You cannot speak to them. If you even speak to them, they don't want to get the job done, but they want to get paid for the job. When you are there spending, maybe you're in Lagos for like a week or two. Not all of them. I've met some very nice, helpful, um, kind, minding your own business <laughs> and domestic staffs. However, there's some that are so nosy. You're not talking about a, they start putting their mouth, hey auntie, I, did I ask you to get involved? For me, I love gist. But I also know when to mind my business. That's one thing I feel like God blessed me with. I know when to keep my mouth shut. I know when not to overstep. But some Nigerians do not know how to mind their business. Surely, if we are, if we, if we are friends, we are family, fair enough. You don't know me from Adam. You are a staff of my friend or a staff of wherever I'm staying. And just start getting involved in my matter. That pisses me off. So, but when I, when I what I experienced was that he did not get involved. The driver was focusing on driving. The domestic staff was on cleaning the house, cooking when she needed to cook. And she left. I didn't even know when she left. I had to ask my friend, oh, she left? Because it was Nigerians. They would say, auntie, we are going, no? 
Does that come into you? Going now. We are, hey, we are going. We're going. But what I don't say is that we are going. Please give us something. And throughout their stay over there, they were giving you attitude, they were not listening to you, they were unprofessional, chatting on the phone, ha 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 ha, getting involved what doesn't matter, what doesn't concern them. But then when they are leaving, they wanted to know that they are leaving so you can give them something. No, it doesn't work that way. And I was so, so, I was so surprised, like, wow, that people that can remain I professional. A, I, have a, uh, I also have a video when I braided my hair. So I my, told my friend, obviously, well, we want to braid our hair. Obviously, that's one of the things that you do when you go to Africa. You braid your hair. So I told my friend, she arranged for us to have um, um, the braiders come to the house and um, for home service and braid our, braid our hair. And while they were there, we were watching TV. Myself and Hannah were chatting. They didn't even, they didn't interrupt us or get involved in our conversation. Focused on the hair, they were, they were there to braid. They braided our hair even when they were going I mean, they didn't expect for me to give them tip i know we did tip them but it wasn't like an expectation that auntie you like you must tip me they didn't even mention the word like you go wherever that you go as a brand as a business you should always remain professional as much as you can they didn't pick up the phone chatting they'll be on the phone throughout talking from the beginning of braiding your hair to the end of to the time they finish braiding your hair on the phone chatting like no i want some peace and quiet so 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 impressed that cultural shock for me was that before we traveled to Cote d'Ivoire, my friend did mention that one of the, the that the biggest cathedral in the world in Cote d'Ivoire, a city called yamasukuro and that that's the biggest cathedral in the world i didn't even go on google to say you know, like i didn't, didn't believe when she said that to me I, and obviously even if i didn't believe i would have gone on google to do a research isn't it i didn't go on google to search about it. i just <laughs> take it serious when she said it to be honest I just don't... and to my surprise according to guinness world record it is the biggest cathedral in the world like in africa in uh, Cote d'Ivoire so surprised a beautiful stunning building my friend went up because I was too scared to go up the narrow stairs and close narrow stairs but my friend went up I put the pictures also on the screen for you guys to see and I said wow so in africa I, I would have thought it was the biggest cathedral would be in Rome. Pictures, the videos, the tour. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. And guys, I always um, encourage people to travel. If you know me, I always say travel, even if it's within your city. But then when I went, when I, then when I went, then when I went to Cote d'Ivoire and I returned from Cote d'Ivoire, I knew that traveling is one of the best investments. Not only one of. The investment one of the best investments that you can give yourself even your children for them to experience and to explore the world if you can please 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 one day i am is going to visit africa with me i can't wait to take him to lagos especially and obviously maybe other cities in africa. thank you so much to everyone that took us out Eosa, Eosa's friends all of the restaurants we visited all of the landmarks that we visited the customer service the um, professionalism the lady that braided my hair like everyone that we came in contact with were amazing i feel like we need to do better right from the airport to the domestic staffs to the cost to the restaurants to the landmarks to the because when people visit your city, they want to experience the culture, the food, the people. People don't understand it, that the country makes a lot of money from tourism. And that's why we have to be more open-minded with, with welcoming tourists into our city in Lagos, Abuja, Portacot, Ibadan, and those other lovely, lovely cities that we do have in Nigeria. So guys, this brings me to the end of today's video. If you feel like there's any, any other cultural shock that you, you've experienced while visiting Cote d'Ivoire, please leave it in the comment section, section so that we can all educate each other and learn from each other. Okay, guys, this brings me to the end of today's video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all of those good, 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 good stuff. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.